We welcome you to our worship service at New Testament Church of God, Derby, UK. We pray that you will be blessed with this service and that it will encourage and impact your life to the glory of God. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Luke 10 verses 38 to 42. Now it came to pass as they went that they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. The title of today's sermon is Stay at the Feet of Jesus. Stay at the Feet of Jesus. This is Pastor Paul Gordon from New Testament Church of God, Derby. I want to thank you for engaging with us today as we go into God's Word. But let me pray first. Father, not me, but you be glorified. Minimize me and maximize you. Let your word come alive so that you can have the glory. I thank you for this in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Well, you know from our scripture reading taken from Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, is the story of Jesus coming to a village 
and he stops at the house to eat. And interestingly, I want to put some background to it first so we can understand it a bit better. The story sits between the Good Samaritan and the narrative of who's my neighbor and Jesus' disciples saying to him, teach us how to pray and where we get the Lord's Prayer from. And this story is found nowhere else but in the Gospel of Luke. Luke is a technical writer, he's very detailed. And this seems to be in a chronological order of the text. In other words, it's going towards Jerusalem and he followed this pattern. And we find that he says it's a village that he goes to, but in John's Gospel um, 11 verse 11, he said it was a, a village called Bethany, which was roughly about two miles outside of Jerusalem. And it seems that they were going to celebrate the Feast of Dedication, which is the feast where they dedicated the um, rededication of the Second Temple. So here we find Jesus on a journey to Jerusalem. On this journey, he knows that he's going to die when he gets to Jerusalem. He knows what the plan is of God. And there's a fight, an inner fight between him and his will of God. You can imagine he's thinking to himself, when I get to Jerusalem, this will be the end. And he's walking with his disciples and they're walking and they don't know exactly what he's thinking inside have you ever been in the place before when you you're thinking something inside but nobody understands what you're thinking but you, you you just continue what you're doing but inside there's a deeper war that's taking place and so it is with jesus he's walking and he's thinking to himself what's lays ahead of me is going to be very difficult and so once on this journey i'm not sure if they just got to the house where they sent a message ahead but they get to the house in this village of Bethany and there's a woman they said the scripture says a woman named Martha received him into their house Jesus I want to put some background to this is very popular he's been healing the sick giving sight to the blind hearing the deaf speech to the dumb raising the dead his reputation and his name precedes him he is the man of the moment he is the voice of the people he meets those who are ostracized, those who are minimized, those who are marginalized. He stands up to authority. He has no fear. He has the strength and the power like no other man before. And all of a sudden, he decides to turn up at Martha's house. Imagine that Jesus turned up at your house in flesh. I remember growing up when my parents used to have visitors coming over. And whenever we had a visitor coming over, we would have to make sure the house was in order. My mom put her A game on. She cooked like never before. And then when she set everything in place, we had to make sure the house was in order. Everything was set, good to go. So it would have been here with Martha. Here comes Jesus. And he comes with his 12 disciples. One of the things we kind of often time forget is that the disciples may have been teenagers, 17, 18, 19, 20, maybe ended up to early 20s. And they were not that old. They were what you would call equivalent of a youth church. But they were 12 men who were going to turn the world upside down and they arrived at Martha's house. Wow. And when they get there, there's a great level of excitement. You could imagine the people around the village outside looking in. Isn't that Jesus and his disciples? Where's he going? He's gone to Martha's house? Oh boy. There would have been such a great zeal. And Martha is there with Mary, with Mary her sister. And some, some theologians argue and suggest that Martha may have been a widow. Um, she, and Martha was living with her brother Lazarus and her, uh, her sister Mary. And they're living in one house, but she's a matriarchal image of the family. She's a head of the house. And so, women, you understand, when you have to get things in order, when women pull things together, they take control and so she's setting the best table the best food the best crockery she's setting out the meal getting ready because jesus is here and here they are now then and she has the best of all visitors this visitor you don't get come to your house on a daily basis this one is just a rare off and so now then she she sets the table for him and whenever you have visitors you make sure you give them the best and the higher the visitor the more exquisite the, vi the visitor is the, 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 the more you give because it's the visitor that's coming that you want to impress the most and so Jesus turns up and he turns up with his 12 disciples 
and she puts the best she can do. She puts the best out for Jesus. I want to deal with some things in the text and some background. Because the Israelite meals was mainly made of grapes, nuts, vegetables, oil, bread, wine. It was very stable, very simple. But they had, on some occasions, um, domesticated goat and sheep. Beef and venison was eaten primarily by the elite, and the fat and calf was provided as veal for the wealthy. For example, we get mentioned in the book of Amos 6, verse 4. But by and large, for most people, meat was eaten only a few times a year when animals were slaughtered. And it, here's the strange thing for major festivals or for tribal meetings, celebrations such as weddings, and here's the thing whenever you had important guests. We get that in Samuel um, 1, 1 Samuel 8, 24. And so where we get this, this particular setting, Jesus comes and she sets the table. The table is set for Jesus. And Mary and Martha are there. No mention of Lazarus. But a strange dichotomy takes place. Go back to when I was growing up and we had visitors. My mother would go to the kitchen and the rest of us was, had the responsibility to ensure that our guests were entertained, take their coats. What beverage would they like? Hot or cold? One sugar or two sugar? Milk or no milk? We had to make sure that they were okay. And whilst my mother was in the kitchen preparing everything, they were making sure that they had the TV, what they wanted to watch, they relaxed, they felt at home. They felt it was like from home to home. And the smell and aura of the cooking taking place made you just want to eat before you even saw the food. And you can imagine Martha's in the kitchen. She's preparing the food. She set the table. Everything is going right. She's going back and forth. She doesn't know what to eat, what to put in place. Everything is being done. And everything is in place. And she's rushing around like a headless chicken. And she's doing all she's doing in the kitchen. And where is Mary? Mary. She's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Listening to Jesus. Speaking. You can imagine... Martha in that kitchen and don't go like you don't know what I'm talking about in that kitchen talking to herself I'm in here by myself doing it all by myself and look at Mary you can imagine her looking back around in the kitchen in the hall and seeing Mary sitting around with, the, with Jesus and the disciples and back in there she's cooking and she's cooking angry now I'm doing everything by myself and she's just sitting down there just waiting and listening I wonder if she knows that I'm in here cooking but she's she's upset she's winding herself up she's getting upset because Mary is at the feet of Jesus. And so now then, Martha can hardly contain herself. And verse 39 says this, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at the feet. She sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And verse 40 says this, but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came about to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister hath not left me alone? Bid her therefore that she may help me. Notice this, that Martha does not speak to Mary, but goes to Jesus. I'm going to open some things in this text in a minute, but I wanted to just get this point. She didn't go to Mary. She didn't say, Mary, can I have a word? She didn't give Mary a look to say, come in the kitchen with me. She didn't say a word to Mary, not a solitary word. She just went to Jesus and said, Jesus, I need some help in the kitchen. But one thing she didn't realize, while she was cooking, and preparing and getting all the food ready for Jesus. She was serving him. There was nothing wrong with what she was doing. But I want you to know this church, that the menu that she was preparing, Mary sat at the feet of it. Jesus is about to respond. But I want to know, I said to you in their diet, they would have oil. 
But here was the anointed one. In, in Luke 4, 18 said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me. Anointed means that we're covering with oil. Anointed. Here he is, he is the oil. Jesus said that they had wine there, but he said, I am the vine, John 15, 15. They had bread there prepared, but he said, I am the bread, John 6, 35. They were serving most likely lamb, but she said, but John the Baptist said, sorry, behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, John 1, 29. Now then, Jesus is about to become the mediator. First Timothy says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, and the man is Jesus Christ. And here now then, she comes and she lays her complaint to Jesus. And Martha doesn't say, it. Martha says to, to, to Jesus that she has a problem, but Mary says nothing at all. It's interesting here when we begin to see this, that Jesus is about to respond. And he says to her in verse 41, Martha, Martha. It's interesting, he uses her name and repeats it twice. Sometimes when we want to exclaim a point or we want to get a point across, we sometimes repeat the same thing. You can imagine him saying to her, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Martha, Martha. He was grateful of what she was doing. She was serving, but she didn't understand that Mary too was serving. What he's saying is, is that you are running around and doing so many, many things, you're missing the main thing. And during this time leading up to Corona, we have been running around, busy doing the main thing. We've been so busy that we've been too busy for God. We've been busy doing church, but never giving time to God. We've been busy making money. We've been busy making life. We've been busy doing our own thing. We have been busy being busy. We've been so busy that we begin to have a mental breakdown, a physical breakdown, a welfare breakdown, a family breakdown, because we've been so busy. I need to make the next amount of money, the next amount of cash, the next amount of status. I've been so busy that I've busied myself out of God. Sometimes we can get so busy, so busy that we forgot that we're only human and this life is so temporary. I've seen people climb the corporate ladder when they get to the top thinking I've got to the mountain realized it wasn't all that. Lost their family, lost their health, lost their friends but made money, but money cannot be used to wipe your tears away. Money might buy you a house, buy you a car, buy you a bed, but it won't buy you peace. And so here is mom serving, and her serving is not because she was doing what she had to do. But I want to use the serving part as a reflection of church sometimes. There are some people in church who will be doing the kitchen work. They have to be busy. They are absolutely necessary for the cause. And then there are some people who have to do the sitting part. And they too are equally necessary now the ones who are sitting are thinking, why are the ones running around so much? 
and they're wandering around thinking why are they sitting up but what we need to understand is that both complement each other and so Jesus is here and he said to her you're getting everything ready for me but I'm here everything on the menu is what I already have everything that you're planning is what I already have but what I have you cannot get in the kitchen what I have you cannot make it with your recipe what I have is something that you don't find anywhere else what I have is only here temporary once I'm gone I'm gone but get what I'm giving you right now and the world has been so busy so caught up with its own self and own agenda but I realized that this corona 19 has reached to everybody's home from the palace to the poor the rich, the poor, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When sickness comes, it doesn't ask you where you live. It knows where you live. I don't care what medication you're on, what keep fit gym regime you've got. I don't care how good you look and how good you might feel. When sickness comes, you can hide from whoever you want to hide from. But when sickness comes, it knows exactly where you are and who you are. And this corona situation brought us all back to a level playing field where everybody's locked up, locked down. And maybe, just maybe, just, just maybe, God is using this situation to speak to us and say to us, still, be still, calm down. Psalm 62, one says this, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Where have we been looking to find our rest? It's not the new memory form that you might buy, bed that you might get. That's not your rest. My rest is in God. You know, Psalms 46 says this, when I write, be still and know I am God. I will be exalted amongst the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know. Have we taken time to be still? See, this situation has caused us to be still. We've realized that we can live without fast food. We've realized that we have to learn to cook ourselves. We've realized that we don't have to spend every penny we earn. We've realized that life still goes on. We've realized that the most important thing around us are the people closest to us. We've realized. We've realized that we are merely mortal. And whilst we've been going through a period of fear, that God still says, fear not, for I am with you. We've realized that no matter how much money we earn and what status we have, we are still all in the same position because God is speaking to us. God is speaking to us. Psalms 135 says, I wait for the Lord, my whole being, and in his word I put my hope in this most hopeless times and situation I need to put my hope in him Psalms 27 14 says this wait for the Lord be strong and take heart wait for the Lord church whilst we are in this place where we don't know what is happening God would ask us to wait wait for the Lord and as we wait upon him there's something that God is able to do with us and through us we need to understand that God is with us and God is for us that in this time God is still speaking God is still moving God is still doing something sometimes we need to have a merry spirit that says Lord I'm gonna sit at your feet I know that I should be doing something but I just need to get what you're saying to me today we need to have a mindset that makes us realize that life is not about how much money we have and what status we have. 
that is not life because he's appointed once for man to die then the judgment money silver and gold is mine says the lord we need to realize that it's not about what we earn that's not where wealth is wealth is in the people that we love around us wealth is in the people that love us wealth is in the community in the societies that we engage with wealth is in that space during this time i've realized that we've seen some acts of kindness like never before during this time we have found some talents where we've seen on, on, on the news, on TV and internet, where people have been playing complete concerts. But for people, we found the violence, the pianist, we found so many gifts. We, in this time, we realized that we can write poems, write songs, write drama stories. We found some skills that we didn't realize we had. We didn't take time to find. During this time, if we sit and wait upon the Lord, we'll find not just God, and Lord, but also ourselves. Maybe God. Is saying to us, sit down, sit down, sit down. This is a war, it's a spiritual. Joshua 6 10 says this, but Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make a voice heard, neither shall you or any word out of your mouth until the day when I tell you to shout, then you shall shout. I want you to know that God is maybe saying to us, Keep quiet. Get that shout in you because when the time comes for you to shout when we come out of where we've been so far and there's a shout stirred up inside of me you are going to be asked to shout there will be a shout of hallelujah and amen and praise the lord and in the story of joshua i want you to understand that when they shout the walls came down the walls of incarceration came down spiritual incarceration this is the time when we need to find god for ourselves know god for ourselves if we begin to serve god and search for god he will find us and we will find him psalms 1 um, 40 verse 1 says i waited patiently for the lord God is not deaf to your cry. God does not ignore your cry. But he says this in Isaiah 40 verse 3. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want to just summarize this to you. There's two types of waiting. Two types of waiting. We can be the wait. The one like Martha that serves. Or we can be the one like Mary that sits. There is no wrong or right in this. God needs both types of servers. Those, God needs both types of people who wait. The difference is, is when we wait the wrong way. Both types are needed. But we need to wait at the right time, in the right way. We've been busy. We've been running around. In church, we've been doing church. We've been doing church. But God said, I needed to change your waiting pattern. I needed to wait at my feet. And at my feet is where you'll hear me speak. I want to thank you today. And I pray that you've been blessed. And I pray that this moment, that you would take some time just to wait. Be still. Shh. Be quiet. Shh. Read the word of God. Seek the face of God. And let God impose his will upon your life. Imprint his will upon your life. Change your to his glory and for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. If today you feel blessed and you're saying, Lord, 
I, I just know that I need you in my life. You might be at a place where you're saying, God, I, my life seems to be empty. I have everything but nothing. And maybe the Lord speaking to you and saying to you, this is the day that you need to change. This is the time you need to come into covenant into your relationship with me. And if that's you, you said, Lord, I want to give my life to you today. Make you my personal Lord and Savior. I want to enter into a relationship with you where I sit at your feet or in the kitchen, but whichever way I serve you. I want to just give you this prayer that we can pray because we all need to pray this daily. But if you want to give your life to the Lord today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and my Savior. In your name, Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to let your family and friends know that I've given my life to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I pray that He will bless you. Continue to do so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close with the benediction. Now unto Him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever.